In October of 2020, then U.S. Attorney General William Barr appointed Attorney John Durham to serve as DOJ's special counsel to continue his investigation into matters related to the 2016 presidential campaigns, in particular the origins of the Trump-Russia collusion probe. Well, last Friday night, Durham filed his latest set of charges claiming that a tech executive with ties to the Clinton campaign exploited his access to non-public and or proprietary internet data and tasked researchers at a U.S.-based university to, quote, mine Internet data to establish an inference and narrative tying then-candidate Trump to Russia, end quote. Durham claims that the executive indicated that he was seeking to please certain VIPs, which included individuals at the Clinton campaign. Well, despite this, legacy media is shrugging off the special counsel's latest filings. Why are they? But why shouldn't they? Well, with me now to talk about this and more is Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, who serves on four Senate committees, including Senate Judiciary Committee and the Armed Services Committee. Senator Blackburn, welcome back to the program. Good to join you. Thank you so much. And thanks for talking about the Durham report. Kind of amazing that the mainstream media has chosen not to talk about this at all. It, 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 well, not really. Uh, th they want to they want to sweep this under the rug. But before we get into more evidence, I believe, of a deep state, President Biden announced about two hours ago that the U.S. has no evidence that a Russian uh, move to de-escalate is underway in Ukraine. What, what do you know about that? What we know is that Russia has continued to menace there along the Ukraine border. Uh, we have been disappointed that the president did not move forward in the fall with sanctions, with sales of lethal assistance to the Ukrainian army so that they could defend themselves. We've been disappointed that there was not a comprehensive and unified messaging coming from the diplomatic side of these negotiations. And we're we are pleased that the administration has finally stepped up. But Tony, as you well know, when it comes to this type activity by our adversaries, you can't sit around and wait. You have to be proactive in what you're going to do and go ahead with sanctions, go ahead with these sales to let them know you're not taking this lightly. And uh, unfortunately, the action coming from the Biden administration is more reactive. It is now postured as if you do this, then there will be no Nord Stream 2. That could have been done last fall so that the buildup never occurred. It's a really good point, Senator Blackburn, because not only is it the Biden administration, but Democrats, uh, pr primarily in the Senate. You know, two weeks ago, we heard that there was a, motion, a, a bill working its way through for sanctions. Obviously, there was a disagreement over whether the sanctions should be proactive, as you've described, or reactive, as the tendency is. We have nothing. Uh, so we're going to wait to see what Russia does. So actually, we're sitting on the sidelines doing absolutely nothing to prevent this invasion from of Ukraine. That's right. It is the lead by, lead from behind strategy that the Obama presidency exercised, and now Biden is doing likewise. Now, Senator Jim Risch has legislation, which is the proactive approach on sanctions that we as Republicans would take. But here's one of the points that I think is so important for all of us to remember. You did not see our adversaries coming at us with President Donald Trump because they knew what he was going to do. He told them what right. he would do if they took an action. So they didn't do it. And it is important that we pay attention to that and that people use this time to look at it and see what a difference there is. You can look at Afghanistan, where the withdrawal under Biden was a debacle. Prior to that, 18 months, we did not lose any of our troops in Afghanistan. And then with the withdrawal and Biden in charge, 13 on one day because of the inconsistencies and the debacle that was there over that withdrawal. 
Well, Senator Blackburn, I am uh, grateful. You're one of those that does not lead from behind at all. You are out front. And one of the issues you've been uh, raising uh, even before you got into the Senate, but in particular, as we've seen in the last few years, the deep state. What do you make of the latest filings of the special counsel? What we know from um, General Durham's filings are, are this, that this alleged link between the Clinton campaign through uh, Sussman, a top DNC lawyer, uh, Mark Elias, Jake Sullivan, uh, getting the tech exec who has now been identified, the company has been identified. There appears to be substance to this. I think what we see is the Durham investigation is moving into a new phase where they are identifying the specifics that transpired. And Tony, we have to remember the Trump campaign was being run out of Trump Tower. The mm -hmm. Trump transition was being run out of Trump Tower. I vice chaired that transition. When we got all of this information on allegations and surveillance, I wrote to DOJ. I said, was I being surveilled during this period of time? I never got a response. But I, I think what we will be able to find out is how far and how deep did this web go? Who all was involved? Who all were they surveilling? How much information? Did they pull from any of us that any individuals that were working there in Trump Tower, did they gather information on people that were not a part of the Trump campaign, but were residents in that tower? What have they done with that information? There are a lot of questions now that are coming into focus because of the work that John Durham is doing and what he has found out. I will tell you this. Jake Sullivan is who was Hillary's campaign lead at that point and who broke the news of all of this Russia collusion uh, is now President Biden's national security director. He should step down. You know, we have seen this kind of stuff. I mean, we saw it through the entire Trump administration, you know, the whole Russian collusion hoax and, and all of this. If the Republicans are able to retake the Congress in the next election, the midterm election, you know, people have been asking, when will folks be held accountable? And I know Durham's doing his investigation and it's, yeah. it's slow and methodical, but I hope it does lead to some resolution. But Congress has oversight. Uh, do you think, I mean, you're a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Can we can we expect to see something out of the Senate? I, indeed, we can. And yes, uh, he Durham is slow and methodical. He's already had indictments and prosecutions. There will be more to come. And of course, it is important for the Senate to conduct their oversight. We have to bear in mind that the Senate cannot indict anybody, they cannot try anybody. All of that is going to come through DOJ. And General Durham is going to continue with his investigation and bringing all of this forward. Well, I know there are a lot of folks waiting for that day because we've seen, you know, so much uh, duplicity. Yeah. And, you know, you, know you, have, you have certain individuals that are being, that were, uh, charged with crimes, their their reputations and their lives ruined, while others just right. seem to, to get off scot-free who are actually guilty of things, or at least yeah, appear you know, to be. And, yes, and that is something, at church on Sunday, I had someone bring up this very point. They said, you know, going back into the Clinton years, when the Clintons were in the White House, there seemed to develop a two-tier standard right. of justice. Right. And different people were treated different ways, and they're ready for it to end. You're absolutely right, Senator. I know you'll stay on this as well. Senator Marsha Blackburn, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. You got it. Take care.